Hi everybody, my name is Stu and I'm a decrepit old runner who's trying to be slightly less decrepit as I get older. I'm 62 years old and I've been running marathons for 39 and a half years. I've run 49 marathons, about to run my 50th, don't know where, maybe in America. New York would be nice, wouldn't it? Chicago, one of those. Now, I'm normally the guy behind the camera because if you've seen those videos of people like Keith Bateman and Heidi Jones running really fast uh, and there's somehow they're getting the footage of running alongside them, well I'm not on a push bike, I'm actually running alongside carrying a camera and a gimbal and all that arrangement and sometimes I've got to run really fast to keep up and try and keep them in the frame and try and keep the shot looking nice so that's kind of what I do. Today I want to talk to runners like me who are getting on, not necessarily 60s, but in your, if you're a good runner when you were younger and you're now 30s, 40s, 50s and you find life's overtaken you, you know, kids, family, job and you're not getting as much time to train and when you do train it's hard because you're not training so it, it makes it uncomfortable. So if you're in that situation and you find uh, you've also got injuries but you want to get back to running. I hope today's message might actually be helpful to you. I've been running since the mid-1970s. I was no schoolboy star, but I've had a lot of miles under my belt over decades and decades. And I did get to a point where I represented my country as a marathon runner with a 222 marathon, which is not bad. It's not A grade. It's not, it won't qualify you for Olympics or a Commonwealth Games, but it's a pretty good time for a club runner. So. I feel like I was, I was happy with my achievements. I never thought I'd do anything like that. You know, I was a real plodder when I started out. Just a, I was a, quite a slow runner, back of the pack, struggled to do 10K, struggled to 15K. One day I decided I'm going to run a marathon. <laughs> what a ridiculous idea. Eventually ran a marathon, then thought one day maybe I'll run a three hour marathon. Got there, a couple of years later, around a 2.55, you know, that kind of thing. And I thought, well, that must be about it. That's as fast as I can possibly go. But through learning from people, through hanging out with people who know more than I do, I gradually assimilated knowledge and learned how to train smarter and got to a point where I ran 2.40, 2.35, 2.30, 2.25, eventually two hours 22, which is my best time for the marathon, which was run in Japan. Uh, something over 30 years ago. So it's not likely to happen again. And uh, in fact, if it were to happen again, that'd be a world record for a person my age by about 12 or 13 minutes. So that is definitely not going to happen. Anyway, so that's a little bit about me. Along the way, I learned a lot of hard lessons the hard way, because like a lot of runners, no offense, I'm not that bright. You know, I, I, we all went with the fashion. When the, when the big Nike, flared heel shoes came out in the 1980s. There was a big yellow and blue one called the Nike LDV and everybody got one. You know, we all got one as we trained and it felt great. You'd go into the shop, you'd try it on. It was comfortable, it was padded, it had a big arch support, had a huge flared heel, this spongy rubber that we ran on. It had the waffle sole, you know, that, that Bill Bowerman had told us was a brilliant innovation. Anyway, we all bought these shoes and lo and behold, over the next five, six years, we all had these pretty horrendous knee injuries typically, but everything. Look, I had everything throughout the 1980s. I had runner's knee, chondromalacia, I had uh, shin splints, uh, Achilles problems, uh, plantar fascia, hip, sciatica. I had cortisone injections into my shins at one stage for shin splints. Oh, that was horrible. Anyway, what we did in that twig was that the shoes weren't part of the solution, they were part of the problem. Shoes, we realized, were actually a fashion accessory, not necessarily good for running. So those huge shoes, and I mean, I say huge, but they weren't that, they weren't clunky like Air Jordans or something, but they were, they were still pretty big. They were causing a couple of things to happen. Firstly, they were forcing us to heel strike, and that was in turn causing pronation problems, which is causing twisting issues with the body as the foot's landing, as you're landing on the heel and rolling off the foot, the foot it was causing dramas that injured us, because there's a twisting motion. Um, and we just didn't tweak, we just kept running in these things. Funnily enough, whenever I ran in racing flats, I had a pair of lightweight shoes without much heel wedge or anything, and I'd wear them for racing. 
and I'd find actually I wouldn't get injured in races, I just got, just got hurt in training. So. Anyway, um, some of life's lessons you, t you learn and then you forget and you have to learn them all over again and that kind of happened because by the time the 1990s came on and then the noughties, I was getting a bit chubby and getting slow and not finding time to train, work, family, all those things come along and you, and you get slower. And when you do train, it's hard because you're not training, you're not really fit, and you go out and you flog yourself going, I used to be much faster than this, and you're not fast anymore, and, it, and it's a disincentive to go out and do it again. So, look, I hope there'll be lots of these little video logs, and I can share a, lot, a few gems with you, but uh, I can't do them all today in one short video. This is just an introduction. But the key thing I will, would like to talk, you can hear I'm talking about shoes today, because when I was plodding along about five or six years ago with a bunch of Sydney Striders, which is a, a terrific club here in Sydney, in Australia, and uh, one of the runners said, oh, there's this guy in Sydney who's running and he's one of those barefoot nutcase guys and he's, he runs sort of with no shoes at all or very, very light shoes and he's just run 10K in 31 minutes 50. And I said, how old is he? And he said, oh, he's late 50s. And I went, 31.50 for 10K? and he's like 56, 57, said, that is, that is not right, that, that doesn't happen. That is bull, you've been, somebody's pulling your leg on that one. But it turns out it was true. So there is this guy and my philosophy with running has always been, if you wanna get better at something, it hasn't always been, but I learned the hard way, if you wanna get better at something, go and find people who are better than you, like much better, and try and hang out with them because you'll learn something. You'll, you'll assimilate. It's the opposite of the, if you lie with dogs, you get fleas philosophy. You know, if you hang out with eagles, then mind you, if you're a turkey, you might make the eagles fly like you, but, oh, you know what I mean. Anyway, so I found, I thought I'll go, I'll go and run with this guy, Keith Bateman and his partner, Heidi Jones. And sure enough, Keith's a world record holder for his, that particular age group, which at the time was male 55 to, to 59 age group. Sure enough, he had every world record between the mile and, and 10K. And I just thought, that is ridiculous, because those are the kind of times that I was running when I was at my best. And so I thought I'd hang out with Keith. Turned out to be a really lovely guy. And sure enough, he ran barefoot as much as he can. Even on the roads, he ran barefoot a lot of the time, unless it was too hot, too cold, or too sharp, you know. But uh, on grass, so we went training, and he, I found he had a completely different kind of technique to the rest of us because of the way he, his feet landed and because of technique. So Keith turned out to be a technique coach, and I hung out with him, and sure enough, I got faster again, and I learned a lot of things, and I found I didn't need my big, heavy, clunky shoes anymore. So I got rid of them, and I got into light shoes. I tried the finger shoes. I tried like real slip-on, like, like boat shoes and all sorts of things, or no shoes at all. I found it was fast. It was faster than I thought. And I started to get my old speed back. But I got injured, didn't I? Like an enthusiastic little puppy, as Heidi says to me. And uh, I, I just had a, I did this, tried to do this change overnight and it didn't work. And I got, typically, you get Achilles problems because the, the foot's actually working in a completely different way if you take your shoes off. And I got Achilles problems and calf problems and uh, they took a while to sort out, it took six months or a year or even longer. My own silly fault, you know, I just went at it too quickly. It's not an easy transition from traditional shoes to a lighter, more minimalist view of running. But I can tell you, it was the right thing. Now I've run 49 marathons, and if I was to run a marathon again, I would be running in something like these, two of them, a left and a right. Uh, they're very, very good for me, they're lightweight, they're, look at that, you can't do that with your, with your Nike Vaporfly 4%, can you? On the other hand, you might say, hey, Nike Vaporfly 4%, they took Kipchoge to a world record, they took Jeffrey Kamwara to a world record. However, those shoes are shoes for the sort of athletes that I've just mentioned. And I believe if you try and run in those shoes um, all the time, 
you are likely to be injured. They're not going to be the, the magic bullet that takes you to a magic time. This is just my opinion. And I would suggest if you jump straight into shoes like this and start running fast and you're not used to them, you will be injured. So I would like you to consider transitioning to these. Of course, these shoes are going to take me, or shoes like it, or barefoot, are going to take me back from the plodding, overweight guy that I was 10 years ago, back now I'm in my 60s, to chasing age group records. And I'm confident, having run in them really fast this morning, I ran two minutes 44 per kilometer pace for half a kilometer this morning. Sub three minute Ks in these. Geez, that light. Um, and with perfect technique. Well, not perfect, but as good as I can get. Even Keith would have been proud of my technique this morning in these shoes. So, look, for me, I realized that those big clunky shoes that are nothing more than a cast for your feet are actually part of the problem, not the solution. And shoes like these, uh, lightweight minimalist shoes uh, are going to work for me. Now you might say not everybody can be a minimalist shoe runner. I've seen those clunky five finger shoes and stuff like that. I don't want to look like Krusty the Clown. It's not for me. That's fine. I reckon this is actually the way forward. So I'd like you to consider it. I can't go into more detail than that in this very short video, but I'd like you to just think about that and we'll talk more and I'll talk to you about how to actually do the transition from those old quad hoppers you're wearing to, to proper shoes. Well, thanks for watching. Short video, welcome to Sydney, Australia. I'm normally the guy behind the camera, not in front of it, but I thought for once I'll actually stick my nose out and, uh, and share a little insight that my decades and decades of uh, running have hopefully taught me. We'll talk soon more. Bye.